Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I want to cover how I set up a simple uh, just video render for uh, portfolio purposes um, and just showing off for like environment art. Uh, so I think in general what I try to do at least um, capturing wise with a video uh, especially like focusing with um, showing off my environment is you don't necessarily need to have a, a ton of movement and everything um, really like you are just showing that the environment uh, is a 3d space um, and these are really great for uh, actually yeah, in your portfolio it just gives a little bit more life um, and just having that video instead of a still image can uh, really make the viewer uh, feel a bit more immersed in your environment that you uh, are creating. Um, but yeah, it doesn't take a lot to actually set one up uh, simply and actually just render it out. Uh, and then you can just, yeah, really nicely uh, throw it into the portfolio. And uh, I think it's a, a huge help to really showing off your uh, like dynamic environments. Um, so what I generally do first is I will actually tend to build off of compositions and stuff with my videos. Um, so let's say that I had a specific shot or so, um, maybe like one over here, and I liked this area here, um, and I already have like some maybe screenshots going on. Uh, I could use an existing camera or I could just uh, set up a new camera. And for this purpose, at least, I'm going to set up a new one. So I'm just going to go here and actually go down to create camera here and just do a regular camera actor. Um, so there we go. And then you'll see now that I have camera actor uh, number 21, I'm gonna go ahead and right click this and actually go and pilot it. So um, this is our uh, camera's viewport now. Uh, let's say that I want it to be a little bit more cinematic. So I'm just gonna really quickly change the uh, field of view maybe to 75 and then the aspect ratio, let's go uh, 2.25 um, so it's like you know very just uh, dramatic and I want it to really have that like sleek modern look to it as well um, when I do this render so um, yeah let's say we we like this area um, I could play around with it more but I think in general um, this is not a bad space and then maybe I want my camera to like move towards the kitchen or even move um, over here uh, so um, basically yeah we can do whatever we want but uh, generally now that I have my camera and uh, just a, a rough estimate of where I uh, want to be at least with it uh, I will figure out a path so yeah like I said I don't I don't try to like move it a ton because uh, if it's moving too much then uh, the person, the viewer can't really like uh, digest what's actually in the environment. And so that subtle movement is all we really want. So um, like something like this, if I were to just want to show off like this area, I could do like a simple pan in like that and that's enough. Um, additionally, like I could start over here and do a simple rotation, um, which is maybe what we'll do here. So I'll start yeah maybe like over here real quick and now we're actually going to get into setting up the the video so i'm going to go up here and there is uh, this little uh, sequence spot so i'm going to click on that um, and there is a master sequence and a level sequence and for this purpose, uh, I'm just going to use a level sequence. The master sequence is where you can actually put a bunch of different um, like level sequences together. Uh, it's more of like a parent, and then uh, the level sequences can be more individual. Um, so uh, for this purpose, yeah, I want to just use a, a simple level sequence, and I'm just gonna put it in my uh, regular content folder, and I'm gonna name it. Uh, you can see that I have a couple of other ones, but we're gonna do, um, couch uh, fly through so yeah nothing too special and I think that works well and then I'm gonna hit save so now what you'll see is after I hit save um, it actually opened it up and we can see that it's already in the uh, outliner here so couch fly through a um, and then down here uh, we now have a sequencer uh, timeline and everything uh, for our uh, scene. So 
or specifically for our level sequence. Um, however, we don't have any camera or anything like that. So I can um, either go find it over here or also um, leave the, because I'm still piloting it, I could leave that as well. Um, but I have it over here already, Camera Actor 21. I'm just going to go ahead and actually drag this in over here uh, to this blank area. Um, and this is going to be the item location for your sequence. So anything you want to animate or move over the sequence, you just put it in here. So you can even move props and stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just throwing in my camera. And now we can see that uh, we have the uh, camera here. And then there's camera components, a couple of transforms and stuff. And then this is the camera cuts. Um, and so what that means is there's two different parts to this. I can have multiple cameras in this level sequence and then cut between them up here. Uh, that way it's all one sequence. So if I want to like um, cut to different shots and everything, I can do that. Um, but for, yeah, just what I'm rendering here, I want to get a really simple just like fly through. Uh, so I'm probably not going to need to cut it, um, but if you need to jump between the different cameras, you can see the little uh, camera actor viewport here. Um, so this would show whatever the camera cuts is showing. So like your full level sequence. And then this will actually be the specific camera. Um, so yeah, now we have this and I'm making sure that the, uh, the marker for the timeline, uh, this thing here, I'm gonna put it at zero because that's where I want it to start. And then I'm going to find my start point. So let's say that I am over here and I am piloting my uh, camera as well. So uh, let's say that, yeah, I'm going to start here and then I'm going to uh, move my camera basically over here and then kind of rotate it. So I'm going to actually go down and you'll find transform. And so under the transform, there are location, rotation um, and scale. And basically like I could do all of those individually, but um, for me to keep it just yeah, basic, I can just go ahead and actually um, click this uh, marker here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna add a new key. So basically like a, a locked point of that transform um, for your camera to say at this position, um, or at this moment of time in the timeline, I want it to be facing this way um, and this location here. So I'm gonna mark that. And now you'll see I have a little red um, like circle pretty much on my timeline. And uh, now what I want to do for my next spot is I'm gonna want to drag this out and basically uh, now move my camera, which I'm still piloting uh, over to the, uh, the second spot that I want it to be. So let's say that this was uh, that shot here. So um, like that, and I can do the exact same thing. And now we'll see that I have a red circle down here as well. So now if I move this, you will see that I actually have movement with my camera. Um, and being that, yeah, I don't have any camera cuts or anything, you do wanna make sure that this camera is being shown fully across here. Uh, it can be moved and stuff, but um, this is showing yeah camera actor 21 as you see um, And by default it'll it'll fill it in so uh, you really only want to uh, worry about the camera cuts if you're cutting up more um, But yeah now I can actually go to this and let's say that I hit play uh, we can see my movement um, which like I was saying at the beginning, um, we definitely want to have it slow moving, uh, not go too fast because we want it to be digestible for the viewer. Uh, and so right now, like this looks probably about like four or five seconds long. And I think it's just overall, it's like, yeah, way too fast um, because we're covering a, a decent distance and rotation um, in a very short time frame. So what I can do also is extend my time frame. So down here, you'll see uh, the values for the range uh, start time and end time. If I just uh, left mouse drag that out, uh, you'll see that it is now um, going up. And so basically, I think right now it's at like 150. Uh, so I could double that. Um, so I'm gonna bring this back here. And all I need to do really is drag this out to let's say um, 
350 if I wanted to. And then I uh, would just need to match the camera cut as well. And then also that final point. So the, the location that we're ending on, I'm gonna drag that out also. So um, now you'll see if I hit play, um, we are getting a much softer uh, movement throughout my uh, environment. Uh, we're able to look around a little bit more and it's not as jarring. So that's nice. But the next thing you'll notice is um, it starts slow and then it speeds up in that middle where we're getting to the highest point. Um, and then we are slowing back down as we're reaching our end goal. Uh, and that's because the actual curve of our uh, animation, our transform, um, is basically uh, allowing that to yeah, change that. So what we can do is if you actually right click on these uh, little circles, um, you'll see that it is a uh, cubic for the key interpolation. Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna switch it to linear. Uh, so it's gonna be a little triangle and then I can right click on this and hit linear as well. Um, and yeah, I think you can see that if I, let me go back real quick. Uh, here is the animation. So I just opened up the curve uh, animation editor and you can see that the curve is what's causing that, um, that change basically and the speed and um, the, the, of the transform. And when I go and then add the two triangles, um, so making it linear, it's a straight solid line. Um, and so what that does is if I close out of here and then redo this, you'll see that it's just a smooth, um, constant transition uh, from one point to the next. And that looks, yeah, pretty solid. Um, and so we could call this uh, a, a video render here. Um, so now we have our video. We like everything kind of going on with it. Um, it all looks good down here. And I would say it's probably like, what, maybe uh, eight seconds long um, with the, yeah, the time. So that's not too bad either. Uh, I think you have enough time to experience the environment, but it's not um, just, yeah, overall too much. And I think it's good to have a multitude of shots uh, similar to this to where you can show off some like panning inwards, panning outwards, and really playing around with your compositions. But now we have this, how do we actually get it out of Unreal Engine? You know, just capturing the video and such. And um, basically what we can do now is go over to this button here and you'll see render this movie to a video or image frame sequence. Um, so yeah, I can click on this now. And what we'll find is that this now comes up with the render movie settings. So um, the image output format is where you can change whatever you want it to go out as. I always tend to do AVI and then I will actually convert it to an MP4 uh, with a um, another software or so. Uh, I use Camtasia for that generally. But um, yeah, there's a multitude of uh, softwares that you can use to uh, do that conversion. But um, I like to just export it at least out of Unreal as AVI. Um, and then, of course, yeah, if you have audio or anything, you can mess around with that, change the frame rate. Um, and then there's also the uh, resolution settings. So if you want to do, uh, you know, 4K, uh, whatnot. Basically, you just pick whatever resolution there, and then there's also compression quality. So sometimes I'll turn this off, um, but sometimes I'll I'll leave it on. Uh, it really depends on how the video uh, renders and all, um, just because of the. Uh, I think yeah, it's a it's a case by case uh, basis at least for me with the the compression, where sometimes it doesn't affect it at all. Sometimes it can um, like affect the quality pretty decently uh, and then down here of course also you have the output directory so where it is actually um, spitting it out um, and so forth but generally yeah uh, not too much to change mainly just making sure my resolution is good and um, making sure that it's going to a uh, correct place and then uh, you just capture movie and uh, what it'll do is it'll actually uh, um, it'll, yeah, it'll ask you to save or whatnot. 
I'm gonna hit don't save, um, but then it's going to spit out a little window as you see here. And this is just the preview of it, uh, capturing it and rendering it. Um, and then once this is done, then it should actually throw up the location. So uh, yeah, now I can open the, the capture folder and I actually have it right here uh, available to view. Um, and it looks like, yeah, there might have been some compression issues. Honestly, actually, that's because I rendered it at 1280 um, by 720. So, uh, and that's why it also took a lot less time as well. Um, the higher resolution you go, the uh, longer it's going to take to render it out naturally. But uh, in general, I would say that, yeah, I, I now have my video. It's in my um, folder over here and I can take it in and actually like edit it a little bit more if I wanted to and um, throw it as a mp4 to upload to my portfolio. Um, but yeah, that's just basically how I do simple video renders. Um, these are also really nice if you want to just share a, um, a GIF or something, you can convert that to a GIF. Um, and just yeah, share it. It's, it's a really nice way to um, be able to capture very quickly a, a video in your environment uh, without a ton of hassle and really getting into like cinematic cameras and everything. Um, but yeah, I think this is a, a great way to do that. So, um, but yeah, that is about it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about this, of course, feel free to drop them below and I will see you next time.